Hello everyone, welcome back to Highway 49 RC. Um, I hope you all are doing super well in the times that we are in currently. Staying home, staying well, doing your part. Um, I certainly have been. I've been having a lot of fun doing various things. Um, and today I want to talk about something that was featured in a recent video, and that would be this Lego forklift here that I've built. Um, I have yet to post that video as of the time of this filming, but you'll see it soon enough. Um, or you'll have seen it already by now, but uh, I want to talk about this today because I know there's probably going to be questions about it. Um, so I guess let's dive in here. This is a Lego Technic forklift that I built um, over the last, well, like a week ago, and it took me about a week and a half to build this completely. From the ground up, this was not a set or kit in any sort of form. Um, this came purely from my imagination. Um, I've spent a lot of time with LEGO over the years. If you've been with my channel since the early days, you'll know that. Um, it, I don't really know where to start, but I had to do some innovating um, because this is run off of a real RC radio system. So this is run off my RC transmitter here. It has a Holmes Hobbies motor in it, got a regular RC servo, but then it also has the LEGO power functions controls in it as well. So the power functions controls control the boom up here tilting forward and back and the forks raising and lowering as well. So those are on the LEGO system and the drivetrain and steering is all on the RC system. So I'm going to go ahead and put a battery in this, show you guys those functions up close, take some of this outer covering off, give you guys a more detailed look at how everything is put together. Like I said, I think I have to... I, I think I said that I had to make custom adapters and stuff like that for the motor to actually mount two Lego pieces, so I'll show you all that. But let me get a battery in it, and we'll take a closer look. Alright, so I've gone ahead and removed the covering here, as you can see. I've also taken off the back coverings for this electronics box here. Set that stuff aside, and let's kind of go over the main units, and then show some more... Um, I'll do some close-ups of all the things so you guys kind of get a better sense of what's going on. Um, so back here, this is my RC radio system. This is the stock, these are the stock electronics out of my Galanda because that's just what I had on hand when I was building this. Um, and that was just easiest to use because it, it was already bound up to my radio and I could easily just plug in what I needed and it was already set up basically for me. As you would have in any normal trail truck, normal LiPo battery goes into the SC to the receiver and to the Holmes Hobbies motor. And there's also a servo tucked underneath this motor, which I'll show more in depth later. It's right down there. Actually, you can barely see it, but it's in there. So that's that. This motor setup here, as you can see, I've got some aluminum plate here and a drive adapter that I had to make so I could adapt from the motor shaft to the Lego shafts, um, which was actually fun to make. I was able to use my, well, it's not mine, but mine and my dad's wood lathe um, to do this. I just chucked this piece of all thread in there because it was the biggest chunk of round stock that we had at the time. So that's just what I was able to use. Um, I chucked it in there, filed some flats for the uh, set screws. So basically I have set screws, a set screw holding it to the motor shaft and a set screw holding it to the RC shaft. So this was all a lot of fun to make, and oh my lord, do I wish I had a mill, like a bridge port or something. Oh my god, that'd be so great, because this motor plate, I did a ton of super exact measurements and stuff like that for this to get the holes exactly lined up perfect. And because I don't have a mill, I only have a drill press, I can't get them to the thousandth of an inch. I can only get them to like, uh, like the fiftieth of an inch, so really not that good. That was that was fun to design and make. Ended up pretty good, not as perfect as I would have liked. Um, moving forward, this is the RC receiver here. This uh, this unit up front controls the forward and back movement of the boom. If we turn this on, 
you can see as I move this it controls the motion of the boom essentially and I have it set up on a cam system so that it will just continuously go in a circle so it makes it a little bit easier to operate it's warm gear driven um, which makes it strong the whole setup itself really isn't that rigid as you can see it's got a whole lot of play um, and that's definitely evident when it lifts up some of the heavy items um, that were in the video and then over on this side you can't see it as much but I will provide some more close-ups of that this is the spool, uh, worm gear driven spool winch line for the forks over here. So if we just press on the other lever, on the other control, it lifts it up and down. There you go. So that, right now that motor over there is working to raise and lower the forks via this yellow string here, which is like, it's basically just a winch line. There's a pulley here, there's also a pulley up at the top of the boom, which you can't see right now, but that um, helps reduce friction and everything because I did have one particularly heavy load. I'm not going to reveal that just yet, but I mean, I think by the video you can see which one it was. It was definitely strenuous and I built this thing to be able to carry that load, and it barely does. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it's, it's heavy enough. Um... And so, okay, then I guess I might as well demonstrate the normal RC system. So there's steering, and I have it steering in the rear, not the front, because this is more authentic to a real forklift. Real forklifts uh, have their driven wheels in the rear, and the wheels that steer also in the rear. So as you can see, Got forward and reverse. The drivetrain itself is really not very tight, as you can see, but that's just the nature of Lego. Kind of a problem that makes it so you can't build big things like this as well and have great control over it. Kind of a problem, but it's not really that big a deal. And I just have a cheap little, I think it's like $12 servo in there. Um, but it works well enough for what it is. Two things that I did forget to mention is that this vehicle in the drivetrain has a rear differential, not a front one because it's rear wheel drive, but in the rear drivetrain it has a differential, fully functional, um, and for steering it is rack and pinion driven. Um, so that's, th those are just two things that I guess I forgot to mention. Um, but I mean that's pretty much the overview of this uh, crazy machine. I had an absolutely insane time building it. It was there was a lot of problem solving, lots of aha moments that turned out not to be aha moments. I mean, I'm sure most of us can relate to things like that. Um, the way this whole front section came together um, with this winch system and the front, the way the front wheels are all mounted up, came together really tightly. I think tighter than I've ever been able to squeeze or that I would have ever previously been able to squeeze mechanisms as such together. Same with the rear, I don't think I've ever been able to squeeze um, full differential and rack and pinion steering into such a tiny space back there. Um, and that made me really happy and proud of myself honestly because that just shows how far I've come building Lego Technic. Um, I started building Lego Technic, who gosh, maybe third grade, fourth grade, and I mean, I've built plenty of RC things RC tanks, RC cars, RC moving grabber hand things. I've made all sorts of stuff, and this is definitely a culmination of that. The one thing that I didn't use in this are Lego pneumatics. So Lego does make pneumatic cylinders that are air powered and there's little pumps and everything and um, little like compressor tanks. I didn't use any of that in this. I probably could have but I think that or my reason for not doing that is was because the strains that I knew that this was going to be going under 
it needed to be all mechanical like all the all the movements and everything they all needed to be done mechanically with gears and that's what I did not via air because those the little cylinders that they have they're pretty good for some things but not for something like this that really needed to to hold up to a lot of strain so that's pretty much all I have to say about this hopefully you guys have enjoyed this more in-depth look at the forklift I know that I haven't done a, a Lego video in years now but hopefully it was a fun video for you to watch the original or like the the skit delivery thing that I did hopefully you guys enjoyed that um, I enjoyed making it and and I enjoyed working on this forklift so enough of me rambling my throat is dry it's hot in here so thank you all so much for watching please leave a like hit that subscribe button make sure you comment down below what you think of this insane machine um, it's it's pretty cool I don't think anyone would deny <laughs> Um, and also follow me on Instagram at highway49 underscore IC. That'll be in the description down below, as always. And, uh, that's it for me, you guys. Thanks for watching, and see y'all later.